My name is Caitlin Soxenmeyer. I am a second year graduate student at Mercyhurst University. Um, and this is, um, research is being completed in order to obtain my master's degree. So this is my master's thesis. So in general, um, the postmortem interval is an important aspect of forensic and death investigations. Um, postmortem interval is looking at how long it's been since um, the person passed away. So deposition to discovery. Um, and this is very important in order to help the police eliminate who the person might be or the missing person. Also can help to corroborate testimony or other evidence that's been found if it is a homicide investigation. Um, currently, stages of decomposition in insect lifestyles, so forensic pathology and forensic entomology, are a big part of establishing or estimating the postmortem interval but neither have been determined to be very accurate in their estimation of the postmortem interval. Um, and also a lot of times they can't estimate any longer than six weeks, which isn't great because we do find ones that have been out there for years. So six weeks is a very limited time interval. Um, currently, we are looking at expanding the research that we have with using PCR and sequencing to analyze the variation in soil microbes, which is present throughout the postmortem interval. Because once you would deposit a human on the surface and they start to decompose, they go through stages of bloat and it causes rupture of the stomach, which introduces the gut microbial um, communities into the soil. And it also changes different levels of nitrogen and phosphorus and changes essentially everything about the environment around it. So this is a, a very interesting area of study but a lot of them have been focusing on those intestinal microbial communities, which only last for a little bit of time, maybe six months throughout the postmortem mineral, which again, if you're looking at something that's extended, that's been there for a year or more, isn't going to be very helpful. And also current research typically uses mice or deer or pig models, which is not a great model to apply them to then modern forensic cases because the micro, uh, microbial communities between animals and humans are extremely different. So applying the animal models to humans just isn't gonna work because you're gonna have different microbial communities when you're doing that research. So my research aims are to look at the interactions between skin and soil microbial communities um, to more accurately estimate that postmortem interval over an extended period of time. Specifically looking at surface scattered remains, which is a huge part of our research or our cases at Mercyhurst University. We do have majority of um, remains on the surface. Um, and specifically when we go out to recover those surface scattered remains, a lot of times I, I have specifically noticed that the extremity skin, so your arms and your legs are going to be around a lot longer than say skin on your thorax or on your pelvis. So by Using extremity skin, specifically arm in my study, this can then be applied to those longer postmortem intervals. Um, and again, one other um, research aim is to determine if using donor skin is applicable to forensic cases. Um, you know, just applying a person to or depositing somebody on the surface may be a little bit different than using a donor skin that may have potentially been cleaned or you know, was in a hospital setting. So the microbial communities may be different. That's something I'd like to find out whether or not we can use this donor aspect um, in order to further our research. So to start out with, this is where I collected my soil from. It was um, in the orchard at Mercyhurst University. So it was an area of soil that isn't highly fertilized, it's not really taken care of um, by the maintenance crew kind of left to its own devices, so I felt like it would be the most natural aspect of the soil. Um, so I went out there, collected it with a sterile um, trowel, and used gloves so that way I wasn't introducing any of my microbial communities into the soil itself. And then I came back to here, actually at Tom Ridge, I am using the greenhouse here to store my samples. Um, but I put them in these containers here. They're just plastic containers from the dollar store. But I was able to sterilize them and then put the soil in one day before I got the skin from um, 
from the um, donor procurement program. And then this here at the bottom is the skin in the soil um, after I had swabbed each skin in order to get a basis for the microbial communities that were on it. And then here, this is the first week of sampling. So you can see here in this picture, this is all of the skin in the soil after one week. You can kind of see a little bit of wet soil on top. I did <coughs> use full thickness skin from the donor, so you have the epidermis, the dermis, and that layer of fat underneath of it, the adipocere. <coughs> so you are going to have a little bit of moisture from just the fat itself decomposing. And then every week I will be sampling a control sample of soil, which you can see here at the top. Um, this doesn't have any skin in it, but it's been in the same area, so that way we can kind of track to see what the soil microbial communities are doing throughout that time period. See if maybe, just to make sure that the microbial communities are actually living in the soil for that extended period of time. And then we have here, this is me sampling with a swab the skin itself. Um, I, did, I do three samples on the skin and three samples on the soil, kind of in the same general area, so at the top of the skin, at the top of the soil, and then also traveling down the skin and traveling down the soil. And um, I did it in triplicate just in order to have that human error, in kind of what you do in science. In general, you always have things in threes, so that way you have a little bit of a um, barrier for, for your research. And then this is week two. Um, every week I'm going to be sampling two um, pieces of skin. So this is here, looking at it just in that large sample, and then I took it out and flipped the skin over in order to um, sample it. You can kind of see here that there's a little bit of moisture underneath of where the skin was in contact with the soil. And then you have the next one here, and you can see underneath that it doesn't have quite as much moisture underneath, but it also doesn't have quite as much of the definition of desiccation around the outside of the skin. So definitely think interesting things to look at. Um, I've also heard from some of the staff here that it's depending on the, how hot it is, it looks a little bit greasier. So it's been interesting to hear about how the skin has been um, going throughout its, its time here. And they've lovingly named him Frank. So <laughs> if anybody <laughs> wants to reference the skin, his name is Frank, just so you know. <laughs> um, but then after sampling, I'm hopefully going to do either real-time PCR or sequencing in order to look at the DNA of the microbes themselves. If I do real-time PCR, I'll be focusing on two soil-specific and two skin-specific um, microbes, and it'll be quantities and a crossover over the time interval with real-time PCR. If I'm able to do sequencing, it'll be all of the microbes that are present, and again, I'm hoping to compare either presence or quantities of those microbes on the soil and skin throughout the post-mortem interval. And that's just dependent on equipment and availability, still trying to work that out. So my expected results are that the microbes from the skin and the soil will interact or cross over um, at a very specific time point throughout the post-mortem interval, which would then be useful in the forensic cases. So if you went out and sampled the skin and sampled the soil and found these specific microbes present at that time, you could then look back at this chart and say, well, if it's here in this, around this quantity, it most likely was here for six weeks or something like that. Um, and, but then also, as I said earlier, also being able to determine whether or not you can use a donor for at least this type of research. And I'd like to say thank you to Mercy Hearts for allowing me to do this type of research, to the lovely people here at Tom Ridge and the Regional Science Consortium for storing my skin in their lovely greenhouse, and to Science Care, um, that is the company that I was able to purchase my skin from. They are an organ donation um, or a body donation program for uh, medical and science research. So, any questions? 